Pismo clams were once part of a thriving commercial and recreational fishery in California. Here in Orange County, they were plentiful too. I've been told by many people that on any given day during a low tide, from Newport to Long Beach, you would see hundreds of people with rakes and pitchforks raking the sand for clams to make delicious chowders and stew for their families. There isn't much data on the numbers of clams we had here in Orange County, but people say they could just dig in the sand with their toes and easily find clams. This is a picture of a Huntington Beach lifeguard. I've been told that after work, they used to go dive for clams under the Huntington Beach Pier and fill their wetsuits full of tasty clams. From what I can surmise, all that seemed to end in the early 1980s. Now, no one even bothers to rake for clams because there just aren't enough left to make it worthwhile. Hi, I'm Nancy Caruso. I'm a marine biologist and founder of Get Inspired. I've been restoring marine species to our coast for the last 20 years. I taught 5,000 kids to grow giant kelp in their classrooms and trained 250 volunteer divers to successfully restore our kelp forests after they'd been gone for over 20 years. And for the last 12 years, we've taught another 5,000 students to grow green abalone and white sea bass in their classrooms to restore along our coast. After hearing the legends of piles of pismos that have disappeared from our shores, I decided to start investigating clam restoration too. No one knows just how many clams are left, so I'm looking for volunteers to help with this new species. We want to rake all the sandy beaches in Orange County to figure out clam densities, their ages and sizes, and learn as much as we can about them. They haven't been studied in Orange County for more than 40 years. Volunteers who come out and help us survey for clams should be prepared to get wet up to their waist. Wetsuits work great, but they're not necessary. Just be sure to dress for the weather and wear something that can get wet. Neoprene booties or water shoes are a must to protect your feet from sharp shells and rocks. Be sure that the shoes are attached to your feet or they may get stuck in the sand. You should be prepared to rake for about an hour. You'll be raking a straight line through the sand with up to 10 other rakers. If you have any back issues, I don't recommend raking. I admit it does take some strength. You must push the rake down into the sand with one hand and pull it across 300 meters of beach. The clams are buried in sand about as deep as their shell is long. So a three inch clam is buried in about three inches of sand. You can't see the clams. You have to feel them with your rake. When you think you've hit one, you kneel down and dig around the rake to see what you've hit. If it's a clam, you call out clam and a runner will come out and get it from you and take a GPS coordinate. You'll stay in place until they bring the clam back. All the clams we find are measured, weighed, and then reburied in the same place we found them. And we always need a few volunteers to help with that too. After measurement, all the clams are buried in the same orientation, hinge up facing the beach. We hope that this work lays the foundation for future restoration of the Pismo clam. Our research team just became the first to spawn and grow Pismo clams in the whole world. Although it might look like all work, we have lots of fun too. All the restoration work that we've accomplished over the years has only been made possible by the volunteers who care as much as we do about our oceans. I'm so grateful for their time and the friendships we've made. I look forward to meeting you soon. If you'd like to volunteer for a clam survey, please send me an email and I'll add you to our roster. I send out announcements whenever we have a clam survey scheduled and you can sign up to help. Thank you so much for helping us change the world.